you're of course familiar with the idea that the energy that powers your house, um, the energy that powers our street lights, a lot of our industries, comes from power plants. How is that energy produced in the power plants? How is it the energy of uh, the coal or the oil or the water uh, in hydroelectric power or solar energy converted into electrical energy and transmitted to your house? Okay, these are very significant questions, uh, especially significant with the millennium coming up in less than a year. Uh, if you're watching this tape a year from now, of course, you'll know how things worked out, but power stations are one of the great um, questions. Are the power stations going to work? And you might have some appreciation at the end of this course why all the concern, uh, because so much of what goes on in power stations is run by computers. What happens? How is power generated? What does it feel like to be the power plant? Okay, we'll actually do some generating of electricity by turning a crank on a little handheld generator and feel what happens when we plug in a light or two lights or whatever and get an idea what the power plant feels, if a power plant could feel anything, when everybody plugs in their air conditioners on the first of January of the year 2000. I don't know why people are going to be plugging in their air conditioners, but let's pretend they do. Uh, just to test and see if the air conditioners still work. Uh, what's going to happen to the power plants then, provided, of course, that they still have uh, the ability to distribute power in the accustomed fashion, uh, and provided the turbines don't all explode um, due to some bugs in the chips. I, I think they'll have the turbines fixed by then. We'll, we'll see about the distribution, because that's a little more complicated. Um, how do electrical currents produce magnetic fields. It turns out that electrical currents do produce magnetic fields. And how do they react to magnetic fields? Because not only do the electrical currents produce magnetic fields, they react to magnetic fields. What's the nature of that interaction? Uh, how is it that we use magnetic fields to produce electrical power, electrical uh, voltage, EMF, uh, electromagnetic force? Uh, electromotive force. Uh, what about magnets? How do we get permanent magnets? How do we magnetize certain things and why do other things seem to be magnetized on their own accord, of their own accord? Okay, so a lot of interesting questions involving electricity and magnetism and a lot of interesting experiments that we're going to be able to do. Another question uh, that we're going to answer is what happens when things start moving near the speed of light. It turns out that the time is measured by an object that's moving close to the speed of light is different than the time as measured from somebody sitting in the lab observing something going by near the speed of light. Um, and we'll discuss how some of that happens and what the theoretical basis for that is. The idea that the velocity of light is the same no matter what reference frame uh, you're sitting in. No, uh, if you are observing a beam of light, or if two people are observing a beam of light from two different what's called inertial reference frames, non-accelerating reference frames, um, both people will see that the light beam is moving at the same speed, no matter what their relative speeds. And how does this distortion of time and distortion of length and distortion of uh, effective mass result from that sort of uh, assumption? Um, how did Einstein arrive at these theories, and what about general relativity? Uh, what happens with accelerating reference frames? So these are going to be very interesting topics. What happens when we deal with things on a very small scale, the scale of quantum mechanics? Things don't act the same on small scales as they do on big scales. So uh, this is kind of an overview of some of the topics that we will be covering in the course. Uh, some very interesting topics, some very interesting stuff uh, that we'll be looking at, and some interesting experiments, some interesting problems to be solved, some interesting ideas to play around with. So, uh, the next clip we'll talk in a little more detail about some of the ideas, the topics, the quantities that we're going to measure and discuss.